Welcome everybody to the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast. And hey, let's get right into it. We have a very special guest, a good friend of mine. We travel around the world, not together, but we always end up in a lot of the same places, Dr. Jack Wolfson. So thanks for joining us. Now, so uh, uh, Dr. Eric, it's a pleasure to be on uh, and it's always great to see you. Uh, when I see you in person or see you on screen. And I really just, I, I love everything you're doing. And I think just the whole concept of the 100-year lifestyle, isn't that what everybody's looking for? You know, your patients, my patients, anyone who's listening, family members, that's what we're trying to achieve. And we know that conventional medicine fails that significantly. If anything, it's an 80-year lifestyle and it's a sickness lifestyle with the last few years spent in the hospital on on life support, and I've seen it firsthand. So uh, glad to be on with you always to uh, to share the message. Oh, you know what? My pleasure. And you just said a mouthful, and you didn't even give me a chance to introduce you for the people that don't know you. So <laughs> uh, we're going to cover a lot of the things that you just mentioned because you're right on point as always. And uh, so Dr. Jack Wolfson, he is the paleo cardiologist. You probably read his book. If you haven't, you ought to go get it. If you are looking to make some cardiology changes, you need to go to Paradise Valley. Uh, Arizona, which is where his practice is, and go see him. People from all over go there because he's doing it different. And, you know, Jack, what's, what I want to get across to people today, which you are certainly an expert at, is, is that there is a better way to do things than the way that we've been doing it for all these years. We have an article that really has done amazingly well on 100yearlifestyle.com. It's called Personal Training versus Cardiac Rehab. What's the difference? And the answer is obviously before versus after the heart attack. And so many things like heart disease are being blamed on genetics, and it's not genetics' fault. Can you talk about that a little bit so people right away up front, they realize they can make some changes and improve their life? Yeah, most certainly. You know, genetics is clearly not the problem. We've evolved over millions of years uh, in any story, you know, you can think of our genetics are pretty much perfect. It is the environment that screws it up. And by environment, we're talking about food and an unhealthy lifestyle. That's what does it. So doctors love to blame things on genetics because we're not taught anything different. When I went through medical school in the mid 90s, we all talked about, oh, the human genome project. We're going to learn all the genetics. Everything's going to be solved well. What we learned from the Human Genome Project is, is that it's not the genes, it's the way the environment affects the genes, and that's the concept of epigenetics. Yeah, so true. And, uh, you know, we're blaming things like allergies on flowers and trees and grass when it's the chemicals that are on the flowers, the trees, and the grass. And we're blaming things on food that is, has nothing to do with the food because most people are not even eating food. But when you look at all the chemicals that are in the food, it's not the food. And so why do you think genetics from an allopathic perspective, why do you think they take the blame so much from the traditional medical world? And how can people and should people think differently about it? Well, I think once again, it's just uh, maybe it's not the medical doctor's fault. So I don't want to throw all of us medical doctors under the bus here. It's just the way that we're trained. We are trained in covering up or attempting to cover up symptoms, the Band-Aid approach. As soon as a person comes in, it's a quick office visit, and our goal is to diagnose, put a label on somebody, and then give them a pharmaceutical so we can get them, get them out of the office as fast as possible. And we think that keeps them happy, that makes us happy, everybody's happy. And reality, though, is that it goes so much deeper than that. And as you mentioned, that it's the way that the environment is interplaying with our genetics that leads to symptoms or disease, whether it's allergies, asthma, acid reflux, uh, autism, and those are just the A categories. So we need to really step it up and do so much better than what conventional medicine has. We know their numbers. We know their numbers, and we know they're not successful. And in fact, over the last couple of years, according to the New England Journal of Medicine and other big, big medical sources, human lifespan in the United States is actually going down. So we need to take a radically different approach in the 100-year lifestyle, and that's what, that's what you're doing. Yeah, and it's going down in the United States. It's not going down elsewhere in the world. It's interesting. We just put an article up on 100yearlifestyle.com, and uh, it's about comparing the life expectancy in the United States versus other countries, for example, like Japan, where it continues to go up. Back in the 1980s is where we started in the United States 
to take a turn downward when policies changed and pharmaceutical companies did start advertising on television and people started taking more pharmaceutical drugs and they started not being things changed in what we were eating and the vaccination schedule changed. There were so many things that are affecting life expectancy, as we all know, that it's not the genetics because the genetics, as seen in almost every other industrialized nation, is going up. So here at home, which is where you and I are in the United States, but certainly this has value for people everywhere else in the world, what can people, what suggestions do you make to people so they can start to live differently and optimize their genetics in spite of the environment and all the insanity that is happening in the world and the misinformation that's out there, which we'll get to a lot of that in just a little bit. Well, you know, uh, you know, Dr. Eric, I'm sure you remember the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks and he winds up, uh, he works for FedEx. He's in a plane crash. He winds up on the remote Island with the volleyball Wilson. And I would put it to anybody that. If you lived on the island and you went to sleep with the sun down and you woke up before the sunrise, which is just nature, how we did it for millions of years before Edison harnessed electricity into the light bulb. We woke up and then we were in and out of the sun all day long, just like Tom Hanks in the movie. We ate coconuts and fish and vegetables, just like Tom Hanks in the movie. There's no pollution on that island. There's no chemicals. There's no GMOs. There's, there's no pesticides or artificials or anything like that. There's physical activity on the island where, where, he's, where he's doing paleo activities. He's building shelter. He's moving rocks and boulders, and he's securing water and whatever he's doing. If we all lived on that island, we would be in an extraordinarily healthy and I think, you know, Dr. Eric, you'd have to change the name of your podcast and your, and your website to the 130-year lifestyle or the 140-year lifestyle. And uh, that is, uh, you know, and if we can get people to live that type of life, and where, where does genetics come into that proposition? On that island, there is no heart attack or stroke or cancer. There's none of it. The only thing I will say about that movie in particular that I think is educational piece for us is that he's lonely on the island. It's him and the volleyball. And he's clearly, he's going nuts because humans are meant to be with other humans. And as you and I both know, that social isolation is a total death sentence. 15 years earlier of which you die if you're self-described or interpreted to be socially isolated. So having those close personal knit bonds, and even like you and I, I mean, listen, you, know, you and I could be Facebook friends and we see each other twice a year, but just knowing that we're able to even communicate on social media, there is value there as well. Yeah, and, uh, and Wilson was a good listener, but he didn't give back. And <laughs> after a while, Tom was talking on behalf of Wilson too. He started to lose his mind and it's a great analogy. And you know, it's interesting because you, you brought up a good point. People are because they are ending up in nursing homes and assisted living centers, we have a very skewed view of longevity and aging in this country uh, and in several other industrialized countries because we don't have that interaction with younger generations here. We put the wisdom in homes and we don't interact necessarily on a regular basis with our elders. And the other thing that has happened, though, that I think is very interesting to me is that when these people that are 100 years old now, or 80 or 90 for, for that matter. When they were born, their life expectancy was only 40 or 50 years. And so these people, we put them away and we say, well, we're, they're just living on borrowed time. And they start taking medications to recover. Like for example, you know, I saw you talk about it for the first time, uh, the Lipitor, Lipitor, Thief of Memory, that book that really struck me because Lipitor, I believe killed my father. My father had a heart attack at 49. He changed his life, got in great shape, stopped smoking, started taking these statin drugs. And then at 68, he was put in a home because he had a healthy heart, but no brain. And he died a decade later with no brain and a healthy heart because these drugs were not tested for any substantial length of time. We thought we were gonna only live for a few years after retirement, when the reality is we're living decades after retirement. Why is that such an important thing for people that are listening to understand, especially considering that they're probably going to live longer than they ever thought? Well, I think, you know, like you said, and you and I shared that story, you know, we talked to me because I told you about my father's demise of a Parkinson's-like illness. 
<clears throat> and my father also took statin drugs, and, uh, amongst other things that he did that led to his illness. But um, I mean, listen, the brain is loaded with cholesterol. Every single cell in our body contains cholesterol, but in particular, our Not brain- Not like it's a bad word. When you say cholesterol, you're not saying it like it has it contains cholesterol like cholesterol is a bad word. You're saying it's actually a good word because we need it, correct? We need it, uh, Dr. Eric, and so does every other animal on planet Earth. <laughs> cholesterol, uh, the, 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 the molecule of cholesterol has been conserved over evolution for hundreds of millions of years. This is a, something that we, our body makes for a reason. Animals make it for a reason. In fact, uh, dozens, if not hundreds of reasons that we're just starting to scratch the surface on. And if we rob that from the brain, you know, we're in trouble. But, you know, I, I want I to circle back on one thing real quick, and then we could talk about cholesterol as much as you want and stuff like that. But, um, you know, you talk about longevity. You talk about how long people live and modern medicine's ability to keep people alive like your father was kept alive. I mean, because frankly, if, if he went into that form of dementia, he wouldn't be able to feed himself and clothe himself. And, and I'm sure he went through hospital procedures. What about the, the former prime minister of Israel, Ariel Sharon? Ariel Sharon, he, um, I mean, you know, no matter what you, know, you think about Israel, uh, he was, I mean, he was a, he was a military uh, hero, certainly in the country of Israel. And you take, uh, you know, the fact that, I mean, 1948, you know, the liberation of Israel, 57, uh, 56, 67, 73. I mean, he was a military general, and then he becomes the prime minister. And then while prime minister, he has a massive stroke. His family, I don't know all the nuances of it, but he was kept alive on a ventilator for six years. That counts towards the longevity stats, but that is not living um, and I'm so glad to talk to you because this is what the point is of your program, of your website, of the podcast, of you and I talking. It's about giving people the better information because what I have seen on the other side is a, an uh, abject failure. Yeah, and, uh, and that's why, again, you know, coming from different specialties also, which what I think the population and the public is really learning now is that people like you and I who have been pioneering a lot of these concepts, like our forefathers who pioneered it before us, D.D. Palmer, B.J. Palmer, and at least in the chiropractic world, and I know there have been those people in your world as well. And the momentum is really on our side. The public is listening because they are seeing the suffering of the people that they love. And they're thinking to themselves, man, I have those genes, but I don't want to be like that. And what circling back to the DNA is not your destiny thing from the perspective of blaming genes. Let's, go, let's get back to some practical things that you know from your perspective that the people that do these things, and I'm sure they're in the 100-year lifestyle, they're also in the paleocardiologist, which everybody should read. Talk to us about some of those common sense things that people should grasp hold of, not as a way to lose weight or to get lean or fit for a week, but to actually change their life. Well, first and foremost, I think that I would say, I mean, I would say, I'll give you a whole list of several things, then we can break them down or not. But, uh, you know, you and I, we talked about how to, we're just going to go like stream of consciousness on this and, and you get me talking on it. Uh, because in the medical world, once again, uh, here is a person who needs aspirin, statin drugs, cholesterol, or, you know, uh, uh, blood pressure drugs, etc. We're going to give people a better value. Number one, I think there is nothing more important than sleep. Sleep is more important than, than food and anything else. Without sleep, we're done. It makes common sense. Sleep was here before food. In the literature, sleep deprivation is just deadly. So go to sleep on time. Whatever time you're going to sleep, make it a little bit earlier. And then wake up and grasp that sun. The entire world, all plants, all animals, all life lives outdoors. We're the only things that are inside and all day long, and we're not getting the sun, and we're suffering the consequences. So sleep, sun, staying away uh, from, from chemicals in our food. So if you stick with organic food, the more organic you are, the longer you live. Uh, you want to make sure that you get physical activity. So uh, getting outside, 
hiking, biking, running, swimming, uh, 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 yoga, uh, just getting outside and doing activities like that. The more you're outside, the better. And then, of course, you know this, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the doctor of chiropractic should be the primary care doctor. They're who you go to see for all things health and wellness. If it's an emergency, go to an emergency room. For everything else, check with your doctor of chiropractic first. And, um, and then again, staying away from chemicals, laundry detergent, fabric softener, dryer sheets, colognes, perfumes, um, uh, electromagnetic fields, uh, staying away from, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess, you know, certainly limiting tech as much as possible. You know, it's one thing to get health information off of technology. It's another thing to sit there and watch videos of, of people's cat doing stupid tricks. You know, that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's uh, where I would go away, you know, with that. Awesome. Well, uh, again, a mouthful in a short amount of time, you said being outside. And I have as my background, I don't know if you could see it, but my background right now is 3,000-year-old olive trees in Puglia, Italy, where Lisa and I were uh, about a year and a half ago. And the, the trees at 3,000 years old are still producing fruit, which at 100 and 120, like you said, we should still be going strong, redefining a lot of that, especially with what we know uh, and can apply if we make the changes that you're talking about here uh, as, and make them a part of our lifestyle. And, you know, when you, when you talk about the doctor of chiropractic, I'm a chiropractor, and obviously your wife is a chiropractor, and you understand you've lived this lifestyle. I had a, I had a thought the other day, because like in our practice and in our 100-year lifestyle affiliate practices and lots of chiropractic practices around the country and around the world, people are utilizing chiropractors as their number one source for like you said, everything health and wellness. Uh, they're keeping their nervous system healthy. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit as well. And, and a doctor asked me just recently, Dr. Plasco, why aren't the medical people necessarily accepting that as a strategy for keeping you healthy and people healthy? And the answer is, is because if you do that, you'll probably never, rarely ever need to go to the other types of doctors because you won't have any crises. What is your thoughts on that? Because I know that you and I raise our kids in the same mindset that we're discussing today. It's really just, uh, it's a dollars and cents issue first and foremost. It's just, you know, you're not going to refer to somebody else, like you said, and then no longer see that person as a patient. If I was to, you know, in my old conventional cardiology practice, if all those patients who came in with chest pain, nine out of 10 times, it was clearly musculoskeletal. If I would have, you know, turned them right around the door and said, listen, go see a doctor of chiropractic. Uh, I will give a, a shout out to some of my osteopathic brothers and sisters that do osteopathic manipulation because I get criticized all the time for, for pushing everyone to doctors of chiropractic, which of course, that's your specialty. That's what you learn first and foremost. But if we, if we send people out the door like that, how would I make money? How would I be able to pay my bills, uh, my medical school bills, my overhead, my malpractice? So you're not going to get too many medical doctors that are going to embrace the holistic uh, philosophy, number one, because of money, number two, because of training. When I first met Dr. Heather and I met chiropractors like you, um, I, I mean, I, I was able to swallow it all up and I loved it. But for the average medical doctor to listen to that and someone like Dr. Eric Plaster comes along and they're like, hey, listen, Jack, the foundation of your entire medical training was wrong in the disease model. I mean, how, how am I going to, how am I supposed to take that? Um, but I think also you made a point you know, early on, you know, you know, regarding your children and my children. Um, you know, you saw the sickness in your father. You don't want that for you. You, you. I saw the sickness in my father. I don't want that for me. For all the people that are out there that are watching their parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters swallowing down pharmaceuticals or dying of chemotherapy, people are like shouting. You've seen the patients. I've seen the patients. You know, people come into my office and they're like, I saw what the drug or the chemotherapy did to my parents. Uh, or the or the blood thinner, like take for example, cumin and warfarin. They're like, I'll never take that, no matter what. So, we uh, and it's also because we can do better. Uh, absolutely. And uh, Stephen Covey, I love the quote. I don't know if you remember the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Stephen Covey wrote it, one of the best books, business books and life books, I believe, of all time. He said, principle number one in his Seven Habits, or habit number one, was begin with the end in mind. And he said. 
and I love this, this is profound. He said, some people climb the ladder of success, they get to the top and realize when they can see from the top that the ladder was leaning against the wrong wall. That love it. explains our healthcare system from my perspective, which has become a crisis care system, which you just kind of reiterated that a lot of the training and much of the training that many of the people have received over decades and have been practiced for decades was a ladder leaning against the wrong wall. So what is, I mean, and you talked about the chiropractor as the primary source. Talk to us about from a neurological perspective, why, because I don't want people to think, well, so what do you do? You go there when you have a cold and they treat your cold or you go there when you have, uh, you know, an allergy and they treat your allergy. It's different than that. It's a different wall, right? It's a different ladder, different wall. Talk about that a little bit. Well, it's a different wall, uh, you know, I think from what, uh, from how someone like you, obviously, who is a well-spoken DC with years of training and, and years of public speaking and, and how you explain things. Me personally, I, I love the ability where I can say, if you've got hypertension, you walk into your chiropractor's office and you say, I'm here because I've got high blood pressure. I'm here because I have diabetes. I'm here because I, I have heart failure, high cholesterol. And I want you to help me fix that. And I, I think that that really, that, that common language, language, how we can base, base you know, break it down to such a fundamental level and say, no, this is my medical issue. And I want you, the DC, to help fix that. Now, the DC would come back maybe from their training and say, well, you know, listen, uh, if, we, if we remove the, the interference between the brain and body connection, and we open up what I would say is that is that is that communication superhighway between brain and heart and heart and brain and brain and liver and liver and brain and all those different cells. If we can remove if we can if we can remove the barriers or improve the connection bet between all those cells and tissues, then we can restore health and restore the balance to the body. And I guess that's kind of my way of saying that for all cardiology issues. You know, go see the chiropractor because they will be able to help. Listen, we know chiropractic improves heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is a is a measure of <clears throat> that can be used by cardiologists. The higher your heart rate variability, the longer you live. Chiropractic is proven to lower inflammation. Inflammation is linked to everything: heart disease, brain disease, cancer, you name it. Chiropractic can help improve uh, autonomic tone, and autonomic tone is important for blood pressure, for for uh, heart rhythm disorders, atrial fibrillation, PACs, PVCs. So again, uh, you know, chiropractic is proven to lower blood pressure by 17 over 10 with the upper cervical adjustment. So. There's so many different ways that we can improve health and wellness by going to see the chiropractor specific for cardiology patients. Well, and, and I want to say to you how much I appreciate your willingness to be a leader in this conversation because the collaboration between doctors like you and doctors like us, the collaboration is not about medicine or chiropractic. It's about the latter. It really is. It's about the latter. What wall is it leaning on and what level of quality of life and longevity from starting out as kids all the way on up to your senior years. It's about helping people live. We call it 100% for 100 years, functioning at your highest level for a lifetime. And the collaboration between doctors like you who think like you, which is a growing number, thank God, really, and, and people like us, doctors like us, is so much better for the whole that I believe that when we collaborate in this way, it is very good for the planet. And we put the crisis care in its proper place instead of making crisis care healthcare, keeping it as crisis care so that we can help people achieve the quality of life now and over the long haul that they deserve. Well, I mean, listen, I, uh, Dr. Eric, I certainly appreciate your enthusiasm for for you know natural doctors and doctors of chiropractic working together hand in hand with MDs, um, but uh, I mean I, I think there's still a long 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 way to go. Primarily, once again, because it's a financial thing, and again, it's also what wall you're climbing is that the conventional doctors are still you know on the wrong wall. They're still trying to climb that wrong peak, and to try and convince the majority of them that there's a better way, again, it's, uh, it's a challenge to 
everything they've ever learned in their medical paradigm, and it's also a challenge to their pocketbook. But uh, I think, I mean, listen, like you said, we're taking it to the streets, we're taking it to the people, we're taking it to the publishers and to the internet and to, and to the podcasts you know, to, to reach the people, to, you know, to let them know there's a better way. And I think obviously to kind of toot my own horn, I think that's what makes people like me so powerful is that I saw all the failures on the other side. I came from over there. Yeah. I left that side. I left the side of the poison. And, uh, and the next generation's coming up, you know, once again, uh, they're not going to, uh, they're, they're not going to stand for it. Well, you're not the only one that, that saw that other side. Uh, you saw it as a, as a physician seeing that other side. The rest of the planet, the people listening to this podcast, the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast, reading Paleo Cardiologist, uh, the, there's a lot of people that are seeing it by, through the suffering of their aging parents and grandparents and thinking to themselves, you know what, I don't want my last 20 years of my life to be filling, out, filling up a pillbox with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday pills, but literally functioning at their highest level for a lifetime, which we know is a possibility, especially following the lead of people like you and concepts, principles, and the paleocardiologist and the 100-year lifestyle. So any closing thoughts, my friend, as we wind down on this uh, inspirational and unscripted, I love the unscripted approach with sharp, intelligent people who can really eloquently say what they want to say. It's been a great, enlightening time for me. I hope for our listeners. Closing thoughts. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Dr. Eric. I, I, again, I appreciate it. I just want people to know there's always a better way. There's always a better way. Go see a holistic doctor. Go see a DC, no matter what your issues are. Even if, you know, even if it's just there for prevention, just walk into your doctor of chiropractic's office and say, I want to live 100 years. You know, I listen to this podcast. I, I, I don't want to take pharmaceuticals. I don't want to wind up like my father. Help put me on the plan. And I'm not going to sit here and say that every every chiropractor is the right answer because unfortunately some do not practice this type of, of lifestyle. They don't live it. They don't adhere to it. <clears throat> Just like there's, uh, I don't want to call them bad apples amongst the MDs and DOs or DCs, but again, sometimes, right, you got to go see a couple different people to make sure you're in the right place. And my father told me this years ago, it's, uh, you know, the best thing is to seek a consult. I go to see Dr. Eric. I go to see Dr. Jack. I like what they have to say, I'll stick with them. I don't like what they have to say, then go on to see somebody else. It's okay to get a second, a third, a fourth opinion. It's only your health we're talking about. So find someone good to guide you to the 100 years. Awesome. Well, uh, great session, Jack. We appreciate you so much. And for all of our listeners, uh, check out the rest of our podcasts at uh, 100yearlifestyle.com and uh, just find Dr. Jack. What's the website? How can people find you? Certainly they could Google you, but give us, give us how they can find you. Yeah, the best way is come on over to my wife and I have a website together. It's called thedoctorswolfson.com, D-R-S, thedoctorswolfson.com. And you can find us all over there. And then my personal practice website, if you've got cardiology issues uh, and you want to come out to Arizona to see me, wolfsonintegrativecardiology.com, wolfsonintegrativecardiology.com. My book is The Paleo Cardiologist. Uh, available on my website for free. All you got to do is pay shipping. It's available on Amazon and, and digital download and audio. And uh, uh, Dr. Eric, thank you so much for having me on, on your show. It's a pleasure to be connected with you, um, you know, really just on so many different levels. And I, and I hope we cross paths uh, in person sooner than later, my friend. I'm sure we will. All right, my man. Love to your family. And uh, until next time, everybody, hey, make today a great day on your way to a sensational century. Thank <laughs> you.